Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today I have a little bit of show and tell for you, a little bit of um, some fun coins just to talk about uh, that I will not get all the details accurate on. I don't specialize in these coins, but um, these have to be among the most storied coins in collector history. At least when I think of uh, coins that people want to have, they think of coins that are related to pirate treasure, of, you know, exploring what was considered to be the new world by Europeans, you know, as they headed out uh, into what is now the Americas, and they started to plunder and pilfer uh, gold, silver, and whatever they could find and take it back to, to um, you know, Spain, Portugal, France, everybody was, everybody was out there finding different things. And so I've got three different pieces to show you and to talk about, and they're all a little bit different, and they're all fun, and for those of you who specialize in this stuff, you'll have to forgive me as I talk about it. I'm going to talk mostly in very basic basic terms. When I talk about, uh, when I think of these coins, the reason I think that they're so popular is just the concept of pirate treasure, and at the same time, it's the type of thing that almost no... U.S. coin collectors that I know necessarily have these. Like they're more apt to have a you know Roman coin or Greek coin in their collection, along with U.S. coins. And yet these are the type of coins that if I was just going to put something aside for my kids or grandkids, I mean, maybe maybe it's just I've seen one too many movies with Jack Sparrow in it, right? I mean. Maybe there's just one too many movies that, that I've seen that have been romanticized over the years by Hollywood that have to do with uh, pirate treasure and, you know, your reals and your escudos. So this coin is certified. Let's talk a little bit about that first. So 1590 Spain, two escudos, that's what the two E is. Sevilla is the mint. They call this AU Details Cleaned. Um, the value of this coin is somewhere around uh, the $2,000 range. Let me show you where the date is on this, and it's right here at the top. Now, what you can see, I think pretty clearly, is the 9 and the O running right under those denticles. I'll call them those dots. And right before that, you actually have the 1 and the 5. Now, the 5 looks a little bit like a flat S, and then the 1 is actually really far to the left. Um, you can just see the bottom of it. Then they've got this really nice shield here. Most of the shield is very strong and intact. You get a little weakness to the left side. It's very typical to see these coins struck very crudely, unevenly. And you can see all the different design elements that went into that went into these, these coins. And so on the shield, each one of those sectors would help you identify the different uh, time periods, the rulers, the mint all that stuff. The mint actually usually was its own mark off to the side. And then you have also the different designs of the cross crest portion would show you also a way to figure out what time period the coin is from. So on these coins, if you do, if you do want to learn more about it, I mean, the book to go to is the Practical Book of Cobbs by Frank Sedwick. Now, if you really like Cobbs and this type of stuff, uh, Sedwick still has all of his auctions, um, you know, but he breaks down some of the different types of markings you'll see on the different coins. There's a lot of history in here, you know, and he'll go through some of the different types of shields and how to identify, you know, uh, the different coins. So it's really a good book to go through and learn more about more about uh, this time period of coins, this type of coin. And uh, the term cob is uh, a reference that um, is something that you may not be, be used to hearing, but that is the term that has been adopted over the years on these coins to talk about. When you hear people say cob, they're usually talking about the the um, pieces of eight. Uh, it usually refers more to uh, the silver coins than the gold coins, uh, but I think that people can use them interchangeably. Um, but usually the gold coins, you're going to hear people say, uh, you know, escudo versus real. 
on the silver coins. So this guy, this is a big boy. This is an eight escudo. This with the uh, the frame on it, the gold frame weighs 38 grams. So one of the things that you'll run into um, with with a lot of these coins is you notice that two of these coins are actually in bezels. It was very common to go ahead and take these coins and put them into into jewelry. It was like a big thing, especially in the 1970s. Uh, this is an S that we're looking at. This is also the Sevilla Mint. Um, this I have not identified completely. I think it was, uh, what was I looking at? Charles II, I'm trying to remember the dates on that. But um, once again, you see a really crude piece overall. That, that looks like a big hit mark on the back. Um, there's so much yellow here, my camera is focusing and changing the color to almost a tan or gray color when I get it up close to the camera. But really neat piece. I've not established exactly a value on this. I think this trades for about 4000 or so on that. Um, one of the things that you saw when you saw these coins uh, being put into jewelry, it was really, really common in the 70s, especially because that was the finding of a ship known as the Atosha, Nuestra Señora de Atosha. So in 1622, see this, this was made, custom made here, probably custom made by Mel Fisher and his gang that, that originally did most of the salvage work for the Atosha, and it's got the Nuestra Señora de Atosha on it. So in 1622, uh, a fleet of ships went down outside of the Florida Keys, and the Atosha, which was a rear guard ship, was actually very heavily loaded. It had over 40 tons of gold and silver on it. At the time, it was the biggest gold and silver find uh, in the 70s when they, when they pulled it up. Uh, the ship itself was like about a third the size of a football field, so a pretty, pretty good sized ship. Um, I'm just going to take a close up look here at the cross on this. This is a four real uh, and a four real cob. So the eight real would have been like the full silver dollar size. So I thought this was an eight real that had just been clipped down, but uh, the paperwork on it had said it's a four real. This one actually has paperwork. I just have to find it. Okay, so um, overall, uh, this this piece probably trades for about fifteen hundred dollars in the marketplace today. Uh, Mel Fisher used to pay people in items like this. He'd take he'd make jewelry and and pay some of his investors in items like that. So the Atosha, one of the things I didn't know about that is that there were eight ships that went down in that overall. Uh, the Atosha is the best known one, but there were actually five survivors from the Atosha uh, out of a crew of about 285. Uh, so five people did survive a massive hurricane. And, uh, you know, just it's just something that just became legendary over time. Uh, and usually on coins like these, these are really trap coins. Um, like vacation trap coins. So the other reason you'll see them in jewelry is you'll see pieces like this. If somebody traveled into the Caribbean, first of all, you'll see lots of lots of fakes. You'll see these faked often. And the other thing to know is that you'll see uh, them with the original receipts and somebody was in the Florida Keys, or the Bahamas or somewhere, and they'll have something like this and they'll have paid like $15,000 for it. Or, you know, they'll have paid $5,000 for this. And so you go to these really um, high-end resorts and they have pirate treasure and own a piece of history and it's just people who are feeling happy and happy and fat, so to speak, and they will spend too much money on a coin. So, all right, so this, this episode of the show was really a whole lot more of just show and tell. Um, not as heavy on the information because there's a lot of you out there who probably know a little bit more detail on some of these coins than I do, but... Um, all I can say is this is some of the stuff that makes coin collecting fun to me. I love seeing stuff like this that you don't normally see every day uh, that, um, you know, you can put in to a coin collection and it has, you know, just an amazing, amazing history. You know, it's something that it, depending on your lineage and where you're from, you know, this type of stuff really uh, can speak to your, your personal past or your family past. 
And uh, that's one of the things that makes coin collecting so great. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.